在影片正式开始之前呢，让我们自我介绍一下，我们是荧光笔工作室 Highlight， 是全马最热血的知识型频道。我们以科普的方式聊关于马来西亚的社会、民生、时事议题等等。我们除了有街访之外呢，也有访谈哦。那有这么多的内容，有兴趣的朋友，你们已经订阅我们了吗？还没的话，现在就按赞、订阅、加分享吧。我们每个礼拜三跟礼拜六呢，都会准时上影片，让我们一起好好认识马来西亚。OK， 回到正片。Good afternoon. Selamat petang and uan everyone. Welcome everyone and thank you for spending your、um, holiday to come and hear. And our forum today is titled "Promoting Harmony and Reducing Polarization Through Media Literacy in Malaysia." I am your moderator today. My name is Shai Tan Hui Shi. I'm currently a lecturer in New Era University College, Department of Media Study. So Merdeka Day, we celebrating our unity, freedom, and also the rich diversity of forming Malaysia, so unique, right? But with this diversity, we also faces some challenge. As Malaysian, we like to use social media a lot for、uh, get in touch in our friends and families. And to get information, but we know that it becomes、uh, increasingly difficult to identify what we saw and what we share online. Right? It becomes、uh, the echo chamber and also the bubbles, which deepens the division and misunderstanding. So I believe we all witness how misinformation and the hate speech will spread、um, uncontrollably and rapidly. So as today. The theme of the I Want Festival is called Blend. Through this forum, we aim to break the bubbles where we saw we are, and the bubbles maybe is formed by our own cultures, races, and also the social media algorithm. We want to break it and blend it together with different ideas and perspective to create or to build a more harmony and comprehensive and informed society. We have invited esteemed panelists from diverse communities and sectors, and who are dedicated and passionate for the media literacy education work. First of all, beside my side is Alina Amil. She is the co-founder of Arus Academy. And secondly, we have Kalil Majid. Kalil is the co-founder of Fact Check. Finally, we have Tong Wan Ching. Wan Ching. Currently, is a lecturer of Department of Media Study. She is my colleague, so also. So hello everybody. My name is Alina. I'm one of the four co-founders of Arus Academy. So Arus Academy is an education social enterprise.、Um, so a lot of people always ask me, okay, put, what is social enterprise? So social enterprise is just like any other businesses, but the profit that we get goes back to the community or the work that we、um, that we are working on. And why education?、Uh, because Myself and、uh, my three other co-founders,、uh, we were we were teachers teaching in public schools. So when we were four, now we're about forty-seven people. We run、uh, programs nationwide.、Um, we have two centers here in Kuala Lumpur as well as in、uh, Penang. Our main、uh, partner is the Ministry of Education.、Uh, so we go into schools and we work with teachers、um, and students from primary level all the way to secondary level on multiple different literacies.、Um, all of our programs, most of our programs,、um, are all. Uh, funded by our corporate partners. So, just focusing on media education for all. We first started back in 2020.、Uh, COVID happened. That was also when we saw that a lot of misinformation was being spread at that time.、Um, and because we were teachers, we were also receiving a lot of、uh, misinformation from teachers, especially. And so we thought, okay, here's a place where we can tap into, where we can work with teachers, help them get skills on verifying facts. We also do a little bit of fact checking. Our focus Focus is to empower teachers. So we work a lot with teachers, and because we work with teachers, we created、uh, an online course called the Media Education Academy. This again is open source,、um, so any teachers can go through this. If you complete the course, you can also then receive、uh, much like a completion of certificate course. On top of that, we create a lot of teaching resources for teachers,、um, as if they want to bring this into the classroom. Do they have lesson plans,、uh, teaching materials? So we have close to. 4,700 teachers and、um, at the moment. So three main learnings from running all of this media information literacy. The first one is that media information literacy is new knowledge for us, for our team, because we are constantly surrounded by the skills. When we go into schools, the common comment that we always get is that this is brand new. No one has ever taught us this. No one has ever taught us to、uh, do Google. 
uh, reverse image search, geolocation, so everything is new to them. Um, secondly is that case studies and media landscape changes a lot of time. The content just grew and grew because we had to stay relevant. So case studies, uh, the most recent misinformation have to be updated all the time, especially when with AI coming in. So we have to up constantly update our content. And finally, collaboration is so, so very important. So a lot of the work that we do also collaborates with media practitioners. Uh, so we work with journalists, um, uh, to verify our uh, training content and we also work especially with the Ministry of Education so it allows us access to a lot more schools. To give an idea of what fact check is, right? it's these three basic things. We are, me and my business partner, we're basically investigative journalists and we've taken that and brought it into uh, fact checking because fact checking is core to how you tell proper stories. Without fact-checking, you're not telling a real story and, you know, there's always questions around it. We also now, over the years, we've moved into becoming specialists in counter-disinformation work. So we do work that's uh, a bit broader than just education. We uh, look into issues specifically that have a potential of harming societal harmony, uh, religion, politics, anything that may exist that could potentially cause a rift between people, which is conveniently what you know, we're trying to talk about today as well. And also we are capacity builders because uh, much like what Alina is doing as well, you know, is we take what we know about uh, telling investigative stories uh, and telling compelling stories and we apply that to fact checking and teach people how to tell more uh, you know, uh, empowered stories so that they, they can get ahead of you know, all the disinfo that's out there. Some of the things we do is a lot of like training, editing, uh, and you know, publishing of content. We also provide resources internationally. We've done uh, a couple of things for a few, couple of international organizations, and we did an entire uh, syllabus for Cambodia, for media literacy as well. We also speak to people across the globe. Uh, and that's from TMS in uh, Trusted Media Summit in 2022 in Singapore with Google. And also we help train the guys at MOFA uh, on how to counter this info and you know, engage with the media. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me to this forum and I'm glad to have you all. I did this slide trying to answer the question posted by the organizer. They put it in a positive way, which is media literacy promoting harmony and reduce polarization in Malaysia. But I, I put it in a question because I have no answer as well. And I, I think uh, this is where we can have some conversation or discussion after that. Uh, basically, I'm teaching in a quite Chinese-based community, uh, which is New Era University College. It has a very special historical background because it is in line with the, uh, the, the establishment itself is in line with the Chinese education movement since the 1960s. Because of that, uh, most of the students enrolled until today are mostly Chinese-based and Chinese-educated. The reason why I want to post this up is because it's related to how I teach uh, media literacy or media education. Because apparently in Malaysia, there's also a very established media industry in the Chinese community. We have Chinese media ourselves, and uh, there, are different there are different kinds of reports or different ways of uh, deliver message. Uh, what I realized is that recent years, the social media use in, among the students are also changed or it grows differently uh, and divided by uh, communities. In recent years, uh, especially after MCO, uh, not one of my students said that uh, they, they are not on Xiao Hong Shu. So I think this is quite a very important or significant trend that we have to keep on monitoring because Xiao Hong Shu is quite different uh, from other social media platforms. Firstly, it is mostly Chinese content and it is uh, from China. As far as I understand, uh, the Malay community, for example, they use TikTok more. So uh, the, the social media platform itself already separated our, our, our consumption of content. I think it's a quite uh, interesting thing to keep monitoring because nowadays we are all on social media and most of the time students spend like at least four to six hours on the platform itself. The content that they consume on a daily basis actually affect on our worldviews and also uh, how we think and shape our perspectives on uh, various kinds of things. And also the platform itself is quite uh, special. From my students, they said there, there's a very serious word ban. They have a very serious uh, censorship 
For example, uh, the word uh, like politic sensitivity or political sensitive itself cannot be appeared on the platform. So you can understand or you can get a picture of how depoliticized it is on the platform. The more the students use, I think they will get uh, more depoliticized. Of course, they, they can get a lot of things uh, instead, like lifestyle or uh, fashion or beauty. But uh, if we come to social issue or serious uh, topics that we need to discuss to achieve social harmony and decrease the uh, polar polarization, I think it will be getting harder and harder. So the challenges uh, that I think, according to my experience, is that the social media that we use are separating us from understanding the same issue. And this is sometimes not only uh, users from the user's habit itself, it's also the platform, uh, the platform design. We all know that there's something called algorithm. The algorithm itself will help us to filter, to filter the, the content that they think we will like. And this kind of phenomenon will create the filter bubbles and echo chambers. So we are all now in our own bubbles, uh, thinking that, or surrounding by the people, uh, the like-minded people that we, we, we feel safe and we feel happy about, sometimes um, filter us from some critical or harsh realities that there are some people who have different opinions from us. And we will encounter these kind of people, we will try to react more radically because it is not common in our daily lives. What I did in my class was always um, try to um, discuss or try to remind each other that we have to beware of our own uh, biases and uh, try to discuss the local issue with them. Last line is about uh, the, the, the case study that we discussed about Georgetown Festival that recently happened uh, in, in July. Uh, basically, it's, it's because of the teaser video that uh, raised a lot of uh, criticism where uh, there's a group of pe there are some groups of people criticize that uh, the festival itself uh, lack of Malay representatives. From that claim, it sparks a lot of uh, debates and uh, a lot of hate speech coming in from uh, to attack their own, their their official uh, Facebook page and IG page until they they had to stop posting and to stop uh, promoting their, their festival. So I think this is a very serious, uh, serious case because you can see it will, def you, it will directly harm the whole organizers or the, the, the offline events creating uh, by serious people with a very, very uh, sincere heart, but uh, because of some hate speech or online criticism that is uh, very, very harsh and uh, polarizing, uh, it will, it will, it, it, the harm is really, really hurtful. At the end of the discussion, one of my students said something that touched me a lot. She actually remind the other students that she said, um, yeah, it's actually looking quite dangerous or quite hateful uh, on the online sp space. But actually, in the reality, some people don't react the way they react online. So I think this is also uh, a, a, an important takeaway for all of us uh, to conclude, to acknowledge that promoting harmony and reducing polarization in Malaysia at this time is hard, it's a must. Yeah, we have to acknowledge that it's, it's quite hard because we are really quite polarized. <laughs> but the more we, un we can understand the complexities, we try to un understand the complexities of the media and its influence and the power, and do not look away from the harsh reality we are facing right now, then only the conversation can go on. And maybe we can try to find some way out or not. Keep it rational, keep talking rationally, and uh, keep open minds mutual, with mutual respects, participation, encourage feedback, not to get triggered or offended so easily, and uh, empower each other uh, to, let, to, to let some space for each other to stand out and speak out, yeah, no matter how, how ridiculous or how stupid it sounds like uh, sometimes. And empathy is the key. Try to uh, try to sit in other shoes and think if you feel hurt or if you don't like how others talk this way to you, just don't do that to the others. Such a very comprehensive and I think it's already is a conclusion for our the whole forum. So okay, now we open for the question. King Fai here. 
uh, I think the first question, problem should be people don't read. So whatever you write a long article or you want to do fact check, fact check itself very lengthy and people tend not to read whatever is posted and people are being numb about fact check. They don't care about fact check, just like scam alert. We thought that everyone knows about scam alert, but actually people being numb. So I think fact check also something that people feel like, I don't need this. I'm being numb about this. Whatever I read, it should be the real facts or how. So I think that we need to do a reverse mindset to let everybody know that we can do our own fact check. And fact check is easy with three step A, B, C. Tidak pasti jangan kongsi. Maybe we can just ask one question whenever we read a news, where is the source? If we can answer this question, I think this is a very basic step that everyone can do. Rather than to do fact check, you must go here, go there, listen to this, do this, do that. Secondly, I feel like because rational people don't speak. On any social pla media platform, we feel like this is a very uh, bad comment. This comment uh, may attack certain group or how, but we as fair, reasonable mindset people, we feel like if we say the right thing, we might be attacked by these unrational, irrational people. So we rather don't speak. So the whole bubble thing becomes that all these kind of people keep attacking, will become more and more and more. And we feel like I should do some social media detox because it's so toxic, so negative. I live, want to live a positive lifestyle. I want to have positive mindset. So I want to stop using social media, but I can't. So to find a balance, I think it's very difficult. So, so I think more fair and reasonable mindset people should speak more to counter back all this negative uh, atmosphere on social media platform. Last thing, I think that we can have one discussion. What do you expect from the government? Because I feel like to do a media literacy, the root cause to me, I feel like it's a social media platform itself. How do we license it or how do we see it? Because as you know that the government is putting a bill or a, a, a policy to license uh, all the social media platform who has 8 million users and above. So how do you see it? Whether you uh, pro, uh, are you in favor of it or you against of it? Of course, with our workshop, it's very intense. It has like a whole, you know, content developed at the end of the workshop, etc. But I agree that, you know, a, a, a short slogan, the second part about, you know, just detoxing when you feel like everything is negative vibes. That's exactly how you should use social media with very a lot of self-awareness. The moment you feel like this is negative vibes, get off it. Right? That's what we're trying to teach our kids also. Do not go on social media and be mindless about it. Be in tune with how you're feeling this. People don't go on social media to change their minds. So the moment you engage on social media, I will defend my opinion, Kao Kao. I'm not on social media to change my mind. Doesn't matter what Khalil tells me. Doesn't matter if Khalil shows me facts and research. I am not on social media to change my mind. I am social media to convince you that I am right and you are wrong. And hence, why rational people do not go on social media to rationalize people, because that's not the space. You know where you rationalize? Like panels like this when we talk to each other in person. You do not find harmony on social media. You find harmony by connecting physically with one another, talking to one another, understanding one another in person. You do not achieve harmony on social media. So these are some of the things that you know, I feel very conflicted whenever there's campaigns on social media to get us together and diversity. You don't celebrate diversity on social media, right? Thirdly, on what government should do. <laughs> I think they need to be very clear about what they want. I think up to this point, there isn't much information to know how they're going to regulate this or that there isn't enough effort to help us understand what is the role and what is our role. Um, and I think if it, the, whatever the government wants to do, regulating social media, licensing it, it's not a new idea. Countries have done it before. It's just that explaining that in a layman's term that we can understand and we don't feel like we are being censored is not clear enough. And I'm for it. I'm genuinely deep down for it because from the very beginning of starting fact check to this day, I have consistently pointed out that the issue has always been social media companies. You know, you have a bunch of drug dealers going out and dealing drugs to the public and then at the end of the day, you expect the police will come and arrest the, 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 the people who are taking the drugs rather than going after the drug dealers themselves, right? And it's the same thing, right? You've provided them the platform. You let them say whatever they want. You don't, and then when something bad happens, oh, okay, 
someone gets thrown into jail and that's not social media. A social media gets a 50,000 ringgit fine or whatever. How's that work, right? So yes, they need to be, they, they need at the end of the day to be slapped on the head with a hammer because of what they're doing. Uh, it's just how how's the government going to do it? That's the only big question. This is Cherry from KL. Thank you, three panels. Uh, it's a fruitful discussion today. I think the challenge of media is uh, because people are not willing to pay for the news, so they posted it on the social media to gain attention from the readers. So like for me, myself and my husband, we do subscribe some uh, mainstream media like Xinxiu, Singura Pao, and uh, DH, Malaysia Kini and Star. So we just try to uh, show our support to those uh, media. So for those, uh, for the readers, if you think that which media that can um, is uh, trustworthy, I think uh, you can give your support by subscribe those uh, media. Even media also need to survive, but not everyone willing to pay for the in-depth story. So I think we shouldn't to ignore what the what the small group of people that they are willing to do a good story for the readers. Yeah, that's all for today. This is uh, what we also can do to support a good media is because it's not easy to do uh, in-depth writing and also fact-checking. Here today, thank you for our panelists for their insightful presentation and our audience for engaging questions. <laughs> And uh, the lastly, media literacy is not about uh, understanding the media, but also fostering the critical thinking, empathy, and respects all our diversity, which is the crucial uh, values for forming the harmony in our multicultural society. I hope these forums can offer a new perspective and practical ideas on how we can help to reducing the polarization. And let's continue to work together to build a more informed, cohesive, and harmonious nation. And thank you all for being here and enjoy the rest of the I Want Festival 2024 and have a great evening. Thank you. <laughs>